Now, stepping up to the podium, the United States Coast Guard. Plus, listen into this live, raw, and unfiltered on Live Now from Fox. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we will be hosting a press briefing to officially announce the Coast Guard's convening of a Marine Board of Investigation into the loss of the Titan submersible and the five people on board. Speaking today will be Commander of the 1st Coast Guard District, Rear Admiral John Mogger, who will give a brief statement on the search and rescue aspect of the response. Since discovery of the Titan sub wreckage marked the conclusion of the search and rescue aspect of this incident, following Admiral Mogger's remarks, Captain Jason Neubauer, Chief Investigator, will also give a statement. The intention of today's press conference is to shed light on the purpose, scope, and priorities of the Coast Guard's Marine Board of Investigation. Questions should focus on the investigation. Any questions outside this scope should be addressed with our District 1 staff following today's press conference. Please limit your questions to one per outlet and we will be ending at 10 minutes. I will now introduce Rear Admiral John Mogger. Good afternoon. Over the past week, the world has followed the story of the sub Titan and the five people who perished in the terrible tragedy. The purpose of today's press conference is to bring closure to the search and rescue phase of the response and to inform the public of the Coast Guard's next steps. But first and foremost, I want to again express my deepest sympathies to the families. On Saturday, I had the opportunity to travel to St. John's to speak with family members directly. For those that I did not have the opportunity to meet with, I extend my deepest condolences on behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the members of the Unified Command. As I have continued to stress throughout, this case has been extremely complex involving a coordinated international, interagency, and private sector response in an unforgiving and difficult to access region of the ocean. In total, the Unified Command directed 11 surface assets, five subsurface assets, four air assets, and completed 39 search and rescue sorties, totaling almost 13,000 square miles. And while the outcome was not what any of us had hoped for, I am very proud of the team of responders who put forth their best effort to locate the submersible. While in Canada, I met with and personally thanked members of the Canadian Coast Guard and the Canadian Armed Forces who demonstrated the utmost professionalism and expertise throughout the response. I extended my gratitude to all the professional responders who worked diligently to evaluate all leads, mobilize resources, and maintain hope. Their devotion to duty in the face of many complex challenges ensured that we remained always ready to conduct search and rescue or rescue operations if needed. The discovery of the Titan submersible wreckage marked the conclusion of the search and rescue aspect of this incident. The Coast Guard has officially convened a Marine Board of Investigation into the loss of the submersible and the five people on board. That investigation will be led by Chief Investigator Captain Jason Neubauer. So at this time, I will turn over the mic to him, Captain Neubauer. Thank you, Admiral Mauger. Good afternoon. Before I discuss the Coast Guard's investigation, I want to express my deepest condolences to the loved ones of the five individuals who perished in this tragic incident. The, my team and myself uh, have been investigating this since the, we heard the initial uh, reports of uh, lost communications, and my entire team wanted to express their condolences also. As a senior investigator, I have witnessed the personal impacts associated with these types of events. And my primary goal is to prevent a similar occurrence by making the necessary recommendations to enhance the safety of the maritime domain worldwide. 
Upon receiving notification that the submersible Titan had suffered a catastrophic failure with the loss of the five lives on board, the Coast Guard declared a major marine casualty and convened a Marine Board of Investigation, commonly referred to as an MBI, on June 23rd. I am serving as the chair for that investigation. An MBI is the highest level of investigation the Coast Guard conducts and enables the U.S. to fully leverage investigative resources Coast Guard-wide and capitalize on an extensive network of cooperative relationships with international maritime administrations and organizations. The MBI is currently in its initial evidence collection phase, including debris salvage, salvage operations at the incident site and evidence collection in coordination with Canadian authorities in the port of St. John's, Newfoundland. After the on-scene evidence collection efforts conclude, the MBI will typically hold a formal hearing to gather additional witness testimony and evidence in a setting that is available to the public. During the course of the MBI, the board will first and primarily work to determine the cause of this marine casualty and the five associated deaths. The MBI, however, is also responsible for accountability aspects of the incident, and it can make recommendations to the proper authorities to pursue civil or criminal sanctions as necessary. However, any subsequent enforcement activities would be pursued under a separate investigation. The MBI is also working in close coordination with other national, domestic, and international investigative authorities, including the United States National Transportation Safety Board, Canadian Transportation Safety Board, French Marine Casualties Investigation Board, and the United Kingdom Marine Accident Investigation Branch. Upon completion of this investigation, the MBI will issue a report to the Commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Linda Fagan, with the evidence collected, the facts established, its conclusions and recommendations. The final report will also be shared with the domestic and international maritime authorities I mentioned and the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, to help improve the safety framework for submersible operations worldwide. I will now take any questions. Can you Thank talk, you. Can you walk us through a little bit about the evidence gathering right now? Have you already gotten collected? Right uh, how, how does that happen? Is it for most of the vehicles? The, the MBI leverages Coast Guard resources uh, nationwide and also our international partners to, collect, to collectively uh, collect invest evidence and right now we do have ongoing operations i mentioned two areas the on-site at the accident uh, wreckage site we have a ongoing salvage operation and we are also currently conducting interviews in the port of st john's are you actually collecting items in the floor? I, I just at this time that is the, the priority of the investigation is to recover items from the seafloor and how do you, do you need to like photograph the site how do you get a sense of the debris? uh sir the the, the we have already mapped the the uh, accident site and, and the field, and so the other factors would be part of the investigation. I, I don't want to get too deep into the details at this time, sir. And what other organizations um, beyond the Coast Guard? Yes, sir. I, I listed uh, you know several international maritime authorities in my opening statement, including uh, the Canada's Transportation Safety Board, the. Uh, United Kingdom's Marine Accident Inves Investigation Branch. Uh, it's really parties under international protocols. If they have a substantially interested uh, interest in the uh, investigation, they can uh, request to be part of the Coast Guard's Marine Board. And we've accepted that often uh, citizenship of the, uh, the fatalities on board would uh, automatically make that uh, international country or maritime administration a party to our, a substantially interested state oh. and a party. Sir, let's take another question. Sir, sir do you have the capability to recover these five bodies? And if so, have you communicated that with the family members? I, I'm not, we are communicating with family members and I, I'm not getting into the details of the recovery operations, but we are taking all precautions on site if we are to encounter any human remains. How a lot of So as a matter of uh, U.S. law, 
and Coast Guard policy, the Coast Guard doesn't charge for search and rescue, nor do we associate a cost with human life. We always answer the call. And so the ocean remains an unforgiving environment, and every weekend there are risks that are taken as people go to the water with inadequate safety gear, with inadequate training, uh, or boating while intoxicated. But we still answer the call. We conduct disciplined operations with warranted risk to put our resources and our lives at risk to save others. That's who we are. Uh, certainly, that is one of the goals of the MBI. Uh, the that's an opportunity to uh, learn from the incident, and then work with our international partners worldwide to do exactly what you mentioned: improve uh, regulations or international safety standards, so that they uh, you have improved oversight over these operations and uh, to prevent a similar occurrence. Do you have an idea how long? I can't give an estimate at this time due to the uh, several of the international investigations uh, going jointly and the, some of the evidence uh, sharing, there really cannot give a, a timeline on the uh, investigation itself. We have time for two more questions. Is there any plan to release any um, photographs or any images? Uh, sir, the, the, uh, the Marine Board investigation will not be releasing evidence as it's collected out of uh, concern for other investigative parties. and. The, the families involved, so that that will not be occurring at this time, sir. Yeah, we've the authorities the Polar Prince over the weekend here. Uh, have you been able to interview folks on that ship as well that want to uh, Interviews are scheduled with crew members from the Polar Prince. If you haven't done anything that's been brought to the surface yet, how are you willing to do that? And then what analysis of that they bring will be? Uh, the salvage operations are ongoing. I'm not going to give the details of what the recovery has been to date, but the resources are on site and uh, capable of recovering the debris. Okay. Thank you. Again, thank you all for being here today. For any further media inquiries regarding the investigation into the Titan submersible, my staff and I will be available to provide that contact information. All right, you were just listening in live here to this update from the Coast Guard today, answering just a couple of questions as they talk about the end of this investigation, what happens from here moving forward. So, of course, uh, we'll continue to bring you the very latest with this, but uh, hearing this update now from uh, officials there today in the Boston area after hearing from officials in Canada just yesterday. So a lot of uh, unanswered questions that people still have in the meantime and uh, continuing to bring you some of these updates here from officials both in Canada as well as the U.S. Coast Guard. I'm Lexi Petrovich back on the desk again here. Andy Mack and I sharing the desk this afternoon. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll see you back in two minutes.